Hello, I'm Hugh Collingbourne and I'm the instructor on this series about programming for beginners. And in this episode, we'll be looking at objects. You know, sometimes people can make an awfully big deal of the problems of object orientation. It's really pretty simple stuff. In programming, normally you have data that's wrapped up inside something, a structure or a record. That's traditional procedural programming. And then when you want to act on that data, you have functions and they're separate from the data itself. Well, in object orientation, the behavior, that's the functions or the methods, are wrapped up inside a certain chunk, which contains also the data that they act on, the variables that they act upon, and that's called an object. Now, sometimes it's described as being the problem of adding apples and oranges. You have an apple, you have an orange, you can't add them together and say, well, now I've got two oranges or two apples. They're different types of data. In fact, they're also related because both an apple and an orange is a type of fruit. And so in object orientation, you also get the idea of inheritance, that a single object or two objects in this case, which appear unrelated, can share certain types of behavior or, or certain uh, characteristics. And so they would descend from a common base type. In this case, that would be a fruit. And you could have gradations from the fruit to the apple and the orange. You could have uh, an edible fruit, which would have certain common characteristics. Then you could have a citrus fruit, and that would have common characteristics in common with lemons and limes and so on. But how do apple and oranges relate to real world programs? Well, I want to show you an extract from, it's a, a course that I do teaching the C-sharp programming language. And this explains in a programming sense how objects are created from their class definitions. The definition of an object is called its class. You can think of a class as a blueprint for an object. It's just like the blueprint of a car. The blueprint defines all the fundamental features of a car, but you can't actually drive the blueprint. To use a car, you have to create one based on the blueprint's definition, and that's what you do in programming too. You write a class and you create usable objects from it. In fact, just as you can create many cars based on a single blueprint, so you can create many objects based on a single class. I've decided that everything in my game, that's all the treasures, rooms and other objects, will have a name and a description. So I start out by defining a basic thing class, with variables and methods required to handle the name and the description. And I can create from this thing class any number of individual thing objects, each of which has its own name and description. So now I decide I need a separate treasure class and also a room class. And these will be the blueprints from which individual treasure and room objects can be created. These two have names and descriptions. But since I already have a class that handles those, I decide that I make both the treasure and the room class as descendants of the thing class. Now this is one of the key features of object orientation. You can create a simple class and then define other classes, more complicated classes, that inherit all the features of the simple class and add on new features of their own. So that means I don't have to recode the same features over and over again. To keep up to date with the courses in the series of tutorials on programming for beginners, be sure to subscribe to the Bitwise Courses channel on YouTube and visit our website at bitwisecourses.com.